Hi guys, welcome to another Smartpreneur Live with me, Talula Doherty Aditono. So today we have a very, very special guest. She's a fashion designer who's built a sustainable fashion brand. So we're going to be talking about embracing business mistakes in building a sustainable fashion brand. So let hi Mr. Kelvin, welcome. Let me let me pin our topic first. Um, and then I'm going to see if our guest is here. Yes. So here we go. Hello everyone, welcome. Please join us. Sustainable fashion brand. Okay, so the ooh, brand, okay, I'm just making sure I spelt it correctly. going to pin our topic we are pinned i think eki is with us now yes she is I'm, gonna add her. I'm sure some of you are still we're still waiting for more people to join us but in the meantime um i want eki to join us so we can at least get some of her background some of her backstory hi eki oh how are you hi Tamla. hi i haven't seen you forever how's it going i know i'm fine how's everything you're looking good by the way Thank you. I put on some powder. I knew I was going to see you. Today, I can so see. I small wow. I know you're looking well. good. You're looking good Thank as well. You. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. So I think we're still waiting for some more people to join. Okay. But in the meantime, um, I will, let's go over your bio since we're both here and okay. the session has started. Okay. So you are Eki Okumbanjo. You're a fashion designer and the CEO of the Eki Oris Fashion Company. Um, a women's wear brand here in Lagos, Nigeria, that yeah. focuses on bespoke and ready-to-wear pieces for women and for kids. Exactly. Yes, there's more. Uh, the company, your company, the Eki Oris Fashion Company, also houses a fashion school, and you are mm. passionate about helping aspiring and existing fashion entrepreneurs start, run, and build a profitable and sustainable fashion business. Exactly. There's more. <laughs> your, accomplishments, <laughs> your accomplishments are many. You are a graduate of economics from Babcock University and mm -hmm. you've been featured on various media platforms. I'm going to name a few uh, Silverbird TV, TVC, Leading Ladies Africa, and the list goes on and on and on. Eki Oris, welcome to Smartpreneur. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. Thank you for having me here. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, I think more people are joining. Hi, Billy. Hi, Billy. So, Eki, let's. Mm -hmm. I want people to know a bit about your backstory. How you first got into the whole, you know, fashion design um, line of um, entrepreneurship. What made you want to um, become a fashion designer, and then even beyond that, what made you want to take the knowledge and the experience that you've gained um, mm -hmm. from from being in fashion and to impart that to others to help make their journey in the fashion business a lot smoother. Okay. Okay, so um, I always say this. So my mom had a um, tailoring shop growing up. So she had like a shop in Worry. So the basics, like the the basics, I actually learned it from her. So right from when we were little, my mom would tell you to go and go and fit your dress by yourself. When you're begging, my mom, please, this dress is too big. Can you help me? She said, no, go and do it by yourself. So we just usually just go and climb on the machine and we'll do it by ourselves. So I would say that the it all started from then, but I started like. I hope we're not losing you, Eki. Eki, the I network have... is a bit patchy. So I partnered with a friend and we um, launched a fashion brand called Prince by Kira and Eki. Um, but then after like a year or so, almost two years, we had to like go our separate ways because I mean, she had to go abroad for masters. So, and I was still here. So we just decided to just, just end the company. So mm -hmm. I started working and I just, and then I started my business and I was doing it part-time when I was working. But mm -hmm. you know, when you're working and you're running a business and a business like fashion, I wasn't putting my whole time in it. And then I find I, I usually just used to reject orders. And then people 
people will say, oh, is it be, are you proud? Like I, I tried to, I tried to place an order last time. You said you couldn't take it now again. You say you can take, you can't take it again. Mm. So it was mm. telling on my brand. I, I kept rejecting orders and I just planned like, okay, I, at a particular time, I was going to just save up a lot of money and then I'll resign and then I'll get a physical space and I'll run the business just like that. So that was how I okay. started. So I just okay. just started like that. I didn't have any power knowledge of how to run a business. I mean, I went to school to study economics, yeah? And I was working as a business development executive and a customer service rep. So it mm. was different. I just was just, so I just got a space and when the bills, when the, everything started hitting me left and right, I didn't even know. Yeah. It was just a lot. I, I, it was just a lot of stress and struggle. I can imagine. I can so, imagine. Yeah. But I feel like what I like about, sorry, not to interrupt, what I like about what you said so far is that when it was when you started getting a lot of demand, when you had to turn away orders, that you yeah. now realize that you had to sort of go full time. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't right. like, yeah. I think a lot of people who are, um, in entrepreneurship, they mm -hmm. think, oh, I want to get a big space. I want to get a big shop, you know, so it's mm -hmm. almost like doing it backwards. So they spend a lot of money, but the, the demand is not there. It's so not they're there. now struggling yeah. so to get you're not struggling. Right? So I, you I had to, had I built a customer base. Like I had customers that were ready for me that I was servicing before I decided to resign from my full-time okay. job because I didn't want to just go and be doing business. I don't have customers that will be <laughs> patronizing me. So when sense. I got to the point where I knew that, oh, these people, I have, I have, I have customers waiting for me. That was when I decided to resign. So when okay. I started the business, I was just doing it um, left and right, making so many mistakes with staff, with hiring, with, with, vendors with it was so frustrating with it i just was making a lot of mistakes Sha, and i wasn't making profit when i started my business i understand that okay when you start your business at first you don't like the first the first year you might not necessarily make a lot of money because you're yeah. trying to get back the the capital that you invested into the business but exactly. it was like that for like two years and i'm like ah this thing there's something wrong i need to i need to fix it because i was working so hard i was working so hard and i wasn't getting any money for it i was just being tiny and just busy <laughs> so eventually, yeah, so, <laughs> so eventually i had to go i had to take up a lot of courses online because I just wanted my business to be better. Like, this is my full-time job. It's not as if I have something else that I'm doing. So yeah. I mean, I'm the kind of person that it, whatever it is I'm doing, I put a lot, I put all my mind in it. I want to make sure that I am happy doing it. And I want to make sure that, I mean, if I'm putting a lot into something, it's just mm -hmm. right. And it's just normal for me to also mm -hmm. get my benefit back that will make me to be happy that, okay, oh, the hard work that, that I'm putting into my business is being paid off. Yeah, that definitely. Or, yeah. I, sorry. Yeah. yeah, Hansa. Okay, sorry. Have one second. I just want to. I love what you're saying, but I want to expand it a little bit. So, I mean, there's a lot of entrepreneurs okay. watching. I'm sure who are in the fashion okay. business as well. So, I want to talk about the specific mistakes you made. You know, okay. when you were building your brand, the things that you, if you could go back in time, you would mm -hmm. correct, and those things would save you a lot of money, a lot yeah. of time, a lot of hassle. Can you please mm -hmm. touch on some of those specific areas? Where okay. I I mean I I think with a lot of fashion entrepreneurs I know I know pricing is a big one where mm -hmm. people make a lot of mistakes but yes can you just expand on a few of these areas where people okay. can you know stumble right. okay so if I was going to do this again like if I was starting my business today uh, or if I want to advise someone if you're starting I I think that you should get re the required skills that you need to start because like I said I just entered I just started doing it I didn't have any business I business skills at all so i was just yeah. doing it like okay today i wake up i go to i go to my shop i take orders so i was making i, ha I had no idea how to cost my product so that's why i said that i was i was i was of course i was busy and that's mm -hmm. i was busy i was i was i was taking i i, I mean i had sales were coming in but mm -hmm. the, the sales were not they were not profitable sales per se so mm -hmm. and that's because i didn't know how to calculate my cost I didn't know how to give a proper selling price that would cover my overhead. So all of this, so that was a major fact. That was a major mistake that I made because I hadn't, I didn't know. It's just like, I don't know. So I was just doing it the best yeah. way I knew. So I when start. I went to learn, I 
got the information that I needed. So that was a major mistake costing. And then I didn't know how to price my product. Then also I felt like when I started, I wanted to do everything by myself. So that's a common mistake for many entrepreneurs. Yes, it is. I'm the same. I always want to do everything myself. But then you realize Uh, like, oh, nobody can do it for me the way I can. I want to do it myself. Nobody can do it the way I can, the way I'm doing it. So that was a major mistake because I, I was always burnt out. I was always tired, always stressed. Like, now you can see that I have some cheeks. I feel like um, <laughs> I was so tiny, and it was just like I was. <laughs> I was really so tiny. So I was overwhelmed with a lot of things. I was, I was just always overwhelmed. So when I had the insight and the knowledge that oh, you can't do everything by yourself. If you want to be, yeah. a, if you want to grow a sustainable fashion business or grow mm-hmm. a sustainable business per se, you you have to mm-hmm. stop being the owner. You have to stop being the um, the tailor, the this, the that, the yeah. person that goes to the market. You have to stop being all of all those things and you have to focus on being the business owner where mm-hmm. you have to strategize and just think for your business. And yeah. yeah. So when I realized that well, I can't do everything by myself, so I said I'm hiring capable hands that would mm-hmm. help me. And again, with hiring, I still was just hiring, like in fashion, there's most of the people that, that know like how to do these things most of them mm-hmm. some of them right don't most of mm-hmm. them are not literate so okay they, yeah so the way you relate to them is like it's completely different from the way you relate to people that maybe work in a normal um corporate yes. organization so, so how did you how did you manage that you came from a business development background yeah you know. so tr- trying to like understand them know how to communicate with them right was mm. like i had to learn that okay this person doesn't know how to speak english like that so mm. this person does not understand the importance mm. of customer relationship mm. and all of that so it was it was a struggle trying to get the right people that will work with me it was it was a, it was a struggle but over time i learned the right places or the right people to talk to to get to get me staff and all of that so it was i was trying to manage that part and then another mistake i made was when i when i said hiring people i used to give them employment later so i just would just hire them you would just come i'll just test you and i said yeah go come and resume work on Mm -hmm. monday there was no agreement whatsoever which was wrong because over time i learned that some people will tell you oh madam that one is not part of my job I'm not supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to do that. And then because you didn't give them any letter, there's no job description anywhere saying this is what you're supposed to do. And yeah, just like, no, you're supposed to do that. I told you that day. And if you tell somebody with mouths, it's not, there's nothing binding you. Exactly. So I had to, so it was a mistake as well. So I learned that, okay, no matter the person, even if you're just coming to come and iron for me, I have to have some form of contract binding us. And then before, before I learned that, some of the people that I employ, I had had issues where my tailor will run away with my with customers' clothes, and I don't know where ah. to find them. Yes, wow. like wow. <laughs> I don't know where to That's find them. <laughs> yes, like this business, uh, plenty of things that just happened. It's just so funny. <laughs> so and I didn't know where to find him. Like what's happening? Like I didn't have any contact, no ca- no guarantors ah. number, nothing. Wow. So, what did you so do? it was I had to use my money, me like. I had to use my money. But then, of course, the person came back like how many months after and started begging. But that was not my business. I had sorted it out already. So yeah. those kind of mistakes are what could be, it could have been avoided if I only had, like, if I'd given him a, a proper employment letter, if I'd given him mm-hmm. a guarantor's form to fill, then mm-hmm. I would know who to call if there's an issue. If there's an so issue, all of exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, that, so with staffing and trying, making sure that your, whatever it is that you want this person to do is written down. There's a contract you sign. Some of them mm. will tell you they can't read. If they can't read, they should take it and give it to someone that can read. So okay. all those things can be can be sorted out. Then I, when I started my business, I was always I like not I was always I I, I I I used to refund money to customers a lot. Like maybe you will just tell me that oh you don't like the dress. I say okay, I want my money back. Okay, I'll give you back your money because you say you don't like the dress and. Mm. I'm like, okay, after, after I went, to, when I took courses and all of that, I realized that you're supposed to have like policies guiding all of your relationship, of your relationship mm. with your staff, your relationship with your customers, your relationship with your vendors and all of that. Mm. So mm. why well, you can't tell me that you don't like the dress, that it's not your size or something like you mm. made payment. So I started putting some policies in place that will guide all of those 
kind of mm. things like things mm-hmm. like um the dress is no my it's no more my size mm. then you made you 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 made this dress like three months ago and then you want to come and mm. you want us to fit it for you for free you can't mm. work like that it so make sense. Yeah. it doesn't make sense so all of those things i had to put them in a policy in a document sales policy and then before you make payment okay so sorry can i just can i just in. yes i cannot to um, interrupt you but i i want to just highlight something that you're saying because I feel like, you know, when it comes to creative industries like fashion, like mm-hmm. beauty, a lot of it is yeah. very informal. You know, people who are um, creative people are not necessarily structured business people. So a lot of the time they get carried away with, you know, because I love what you're saying. You haven't said, oh, I sit down and I was sketching. and all this. You are talking about a lot of the practical, the business mm-hmm. side of being in fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that I just want to touch a little bit on how creatives, if they don't have those skills, because you're, you're clearly able to be creative-minded and business-minded at the same time. Yeah. But not mm-hmm. everybody is able to. Some people just want to draw, they want to create, they want to yes, yes, you know, um, express them, their, their mm-hmm. creativity and their passion. Mm-hmm. What would you advise that people who don't necessarily have those, um, business those skills. skills do? Business okay, skills, so the, yeah. the thing is that when you're doing a business, you should do like a SWOT analysis on your strengths your opportunities, your weakness. You need you need to know what your strength lies in so that mm-hmm. you can focus on it. And then your weakness you can mm-hmm. oh, okay. That's right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? It's, breaking me? Okay. it's breaking a little bit. It's breaking a little bit. Oh okay. So um like you don't have to do everything. That's the, that's the mistake a lot of people make. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to, you don't have to be the one going to the market to buy the fabric. If you can get someone, if I mean, if you're when you're starting your business, you can be you can be everything to your business. You can be the tailor. You can be the person that goes to the market. You can be the customer care rep, um, service rep. You can be the accountant. You can be everything to your business at the beginning parts of your business. But once your business starts to grow, you need mm-hmm. to um, relieve yourself of some of these functions and outsource. Because if you don't do that, you're going to burn out. You will not be efficient. Like you won't, you, you won't, how do I put it? Like you can't do everything and be efficient at it and be very good at it. No. So you need to focus on your strength. If your strength lies at actually designing, sitting down on the machine and sewing, just focus on it. You can actually get a customer care um, rep. You can even get someone that manages social media pages for you and then you just focus on just sewing. Yeah. And yeah. then everything, and then every part of the business just runs because you have structured every every part of the business, and then part, it's yeah. fine. So my point is that you don't have to do everything. In fact, doing okay. everything will make you not to be efficient at what you're doing. Efficient, so as yeah. your business grow, when you yeah. start your business, you can be everything you know, because you can still be managing it because maybe you're not getting as much orders, so you can have two mm-hmm. orders a week, and then you sew it, and then you deliver. It's fine, mm-hmm. but. Once your demand starts to increase, once your mm-hmm. business starts to grow, you will know where your business is going. You know, your body will tell you can't be doing everything by yourself. So at that point yeah. where you know that, ah, this is already getting too much for me. I need mm-hmm. to get capable hands. So people are scared mm-hmm. of hiring. So people are scared. Ah, nobody will do it like me. Oh, what if they come to my space? They come and take yeah. my ideas. I, I, I think people are scared of hiring because there's so many horror stories. As an entrepreneur myself, I can yeah. tell you like so many stories. There's so many, about many stories. <laughs> terrible but, experiences but i mean so it's I your business <laughs> but you know what like there's just a lot of there's just a lot of risks that's involved in running business risk, so yeah if you don't if you don't if you're not in business you, you probably you probably face a risk in another thing that you're doing so in life generally there's risks there are different risks yeah. and different things that will happen yeah. so but i feel like when things like this happen it's just for you to learn like the example i uh-huh. gave earlier for the yeah. person, for the um, tell the staff that I had that took my fabric and ran away. After that time, I knew what to do. I started giving letters. I make and made sure that I had Garanta's number for. So I have like your uncle's number. I have someone else's number. I have That's so if that, anything yeah. happened, I can I can know where you to know go where to. to. So you know if, if if that thing didn't happen to maybe I would not have had a reason to do to that. So, that. Yes. Structure. So all of this, whatever it is. The experiences that happen, the mistakes that happen are just for us to learn to be better business owners, basically. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. And I want, yeah. to, I want to talk about, so I know some people are already asking questions. Um, do not worry, okay. we're going to take your questions 
towards the end of the session. Uh, we're going to take note of them. So thank you. Please keep your questions coming. We'll definitely, I'll be putting them to Eki um, okay. towards the end of the session. So let's talk about, I'll talk about two things now. One is mm -hmm. um, financing and funding. When um, fashion, I feel like, needs a lot of initial investments. Um, so yeah. how, how were you able to start in terms of getting the financing, you know, knowing that you have the funds to keep your, to start it and to keep it running? Then I want to also talk okay. about um, profits. You know, how, because I know you do, um, you do ready to wear, but then you mm -hmm. also do bespoke, bespoke in terms of, yeah. uh, you do a lot of uh, bridesmaids, dresses, yeah. made to measure dresses in general, mm -hmm. um, party wear, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then you also have exactly. kids wear. So I think mean, yes, there's some designers on here who are, you know, watching and they want to learn a bit more about how they can push their business forward. So can you talk okay. to us about both the funding aspect and if okay. you think there is enough funding available for fashion designers here in Nigeria in terms of loans, grants, different schemes, and then um, the sort of profit aspect, how you're able to segment your business to ensure okay. that you have different revenue streams. I, I even know that you're doing masks as well. During COVID, yeah. doing face masks. That's very innovative. Everybody, yes, exactly. You can't do your to... face mask. No, you can't. Or so, else I love okay, my so... face mask. I have to come back again. So, sorry. So, sorry let me talk that. about funding. Okay, so for funding, um, like I said, I had to save a lot of money before I started my business because I'm a very, I'm a very, I'm a, I'm the kind of person I like to plan. I don't want to be caught on aware. I don't want to think yeah. or assume that, oh, this is this amount. This is the amount. So whatever it is that I'm doing, yeah. I like to put like cost implication to it. So I had a plan like two years before I resigned. I already made a list and I knew what I wanted to do. So I was saving money okay. like more, more, more. But the truth is that okay. the money I saved when I started, it wasn't enough. Like when I actually got a space, when I was, it wasn't enough because as I did, as I, mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you're, when you're planning and then when you're executing, sometimes it is yeah. just two different things. So when different, after yeah, saving, yeah, things, so yeah. after saving, and then when I, when I actually got a space, trying to furnish my space. Mm. All the prices were all just different. So I couldn't do everything I wanted to do on my list. But I, I started anyways. So I, my fund, my, I got my funds from personal savings and I got funds from my, from my parents as well, family members. Okay. Then um, that's for funding. So people, you, you can get funds from, I think there are different, um, I don't know, I think these days banks... There's, there's BOI. I, I know banks of industry do something for creative yeah. sector. Um, the BOI, yes, they have so, like the sort of yes, creative sector yeah, then, loans then also, uh, Yeah, exactly. So I think banks are starting to give out loans. Unlike before, they used to give loans to businesses, right? But now yeah. they are warming up to the fact that um, small businesses are the future. Like there are a lot of businesses yeah. in Nigeria and they are really doing a lot. So they're trying to give loans. So you can get, you can get loans from bank. But the truth is that with fashion, you're, you can actually start with whatever it is that you have. Because most have, yeah. times, your customers can fund your business in the sense okay. that once they place an order, you use mm. their money to get your fabric to sew their designs and then give it back to them. It's, 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 so you can start wherever you have. I don't know whatever. I don't know. But most times, your, your, your customers can actually fund your business. Okay. So what is an amount you think people should set aside if they're thinking of starting, even if it's just <laughs> as a backup, just so they have something they know that they are holding on to. Um, can you give us a figure? Like, is it 500K, okay, 200K? So it, mm -hmm. so Sorry. it depends. So, so it depends. So if you're starting your business and you just want to be online, and that means if you want, if you want to start a ready-to-wear brand, yeah. that means... And so people are not going to come into your space for fittings. You just want to be online. You always have to deliver mm. to them. So mm. that means you won't need maybe a rental cost you will need like those overheads that comes comes with actually having a, a, a retail space so if yeah. you're running from your father's house or something from your house the cost is reduced so you you can set set up with maybe okay you just want to release a collection a 10 piece mm -hmm. collection and you can also decide that okay this collection i'm releasing mm -hmm. i'm going to be doing made to measure basically because i'm going to do the designs the ten piece collection, do my photo shoot, put out these designs. When people order, then I use their money, go to the market, buy fabric. So it depends. It really depends on what you want to do. If you if you want to do bespoke, oh, that means you have to get a space where people will come and mm -hmm. do fittings and all of that. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't want to put a price to it because 
it depends on your location as well. If you want to get a space that is two million, mm. then you'll be looking at five million, six million mm. as your as your startup capital, right? Of course, yeah. But for someone that you are space, you just want to get a space, a small space of two hundred k, your startup mm. capital can be five hundred k. So it really depends on okay. what what you want to do and how you how big you want to start depends okay. on how big you want to start so i think i've been able to answer the question on funding then yeah. for profit um like i said earlier when i started my business i wasn't making profit or i had to learn how to cost my product properly so that i can make profitable sales because there's a difference between making sales and making profitable sales so i was making sales but i was mm. making profit so i learned so with profit you just have to ensure that you are you are you are costing and pricing your product properly and mm -hmm. leaving enough room for profit because you're working hard like you're making you're working hard you need to have mm -hmm. you have to have your business has to have profit and so after getting all of this knowledge i was able to implement that in different parts of my business you know like i do bespoke i do ready to wear and i do mm. kids wear as well Mm. But the major part of my and I have a fashion school as well. But the, the mm -hmm. part yes. of my business that that like that brings me the most money is this book, and then then ready to wear and then fashion school and then the kids okay. wear follow and then I have a thrift shop as well. So I know the I know my like I I know my business. I have I've, I've kept my data over time, so I know mm -hmm. the part of the business that brings me the most money. So I focus a lot of energy on that part of my business. So basically, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm able to, I've been able to answer the question. No, or... you have, you have. And I, I like the fact okay. that you are very well diversified because I feel like a lot of fashion designers are not as diversified as you. Mm -hmm. And um, like now with COVID, I can imagine even if maybe um, bespoke isn't mm -hmm. booming because there's not parties ready to people are still going to the office when, yeah people are back still going to the so office bespoke, yeah bespoke is you know still sorry, selling, ready yeah. to wear it's still selling ready and to wear kids to wear. wear people that have kids mm -hmm. I'm sure buy you still want kids. to buy so you've not been um your business has not been compromised in any way so i think that's one of the yeah. takeaway lessons for yeah so uh, that's what very it's, it's very advisable to have like various um streams of income yeah. within your business and even outside your business you can mm. decide that okay you want to be a fashion designer also be, you also want to have another business and tell mm. somewhere yeah. else maybe um you sell um food or you sell something else it's fine like you can have mm. as many streams of income as possible but the most important thing is that being able to manage it so that none of them suffers you don't want to put so much energy on one and then the other part suffers and then your customers are complaining so yeah, it's all about management yeah um and okay yeah, just that okay no, perfectly answered thank you i feel like i'm, I'm also learning you know i've taken me yeah, you you've helped me <laughs> my own fashion line thank you Hello, I appreciate it. so i I'm, i know some i'm learning more today so Thank let's you. go into um, COVID because it's something that nobody really expected to, you know, it, it just, it almost came out of the blue. We knew when it first um, occurred, we knew it was happening. We were looking China at it, but we didn't countries. know it would come to us. We didn't know it would come to us and we didn't know we'd have lockdown and all the different challenges that we... We didn't know the impact that, it was going to be yes, too serious. Exactly. The business owners had faced. So I want to talk about how yeah. COVID has affected your business directly and then also about how you've adapted and the mm -hmm. power and the role of social media in your business because you're great at social in fact you help me up my social media game you're like you're not posting can you not post and i love this more because of you um and francis okay you know, you know that okay. so it talks so, to me about about those two things covid19 how it's COVID. changed your business um how you've adapted how you've managed to you know survive how you're getting through it and also how yeah. social media is able to help um with marketing your business as well okay so at this point i'm just like the impact that covid has had on our business is crazy okay so there are people there are really no parties like that so and you know like bespoke is like a major part of my business i do a lot of ashray bees i do a lot of bridesmaids dresses reception dresses those are that's my call right but right now there's no yeah. party there's no party, just a few people that are ordering. But the truth is that some people are still ordering because they feel like it is quite, it's like maybe a little cheaper now. And they're ordering <laughs> for when they are okay, later. Because I still have, I still have some bespoke orders. Funny enough, I still have some oh, bespoke wow. orders. Okay, and then, yes, I do. And I'm like, uh, where is this person going to? Where is she working this dress? But 
what's my own? I mean, you want to make a dress, I'll make it for you. So I still have some bespoke orders, but most of my orders are coming from my ready to wear and also from my fashion school because there's still a lot of demand for knowledge. People want to learn because people have a lot of time on their plates now. So people want to learn. So um, so what this experience has just taught me is that it's always good for you to have different streams of income. So if this doesn't give you money today, this will give you money. If this doesn't give you money today, this will give you money. And I'm also, I'm going to also talk about my sister's business. She makes cake. As in she's, yeah, she makes cake. So yeah. she does different. She has, she makes cake. She does cookies. She has, she does cake sickles. She does, um, she, um, she has different things that she does. So it's not just yeah. cake that she makes. So this COVID period, what she has been making, the others have been coming in, most of the others have been coming in from cake sickles. So imagine if she wasn't doing cake sickles, that means she'll probably not be having a lot of, she won't be having like sales like that. So a lot of people yeah. have, so there's high demand for cake sickles now because people are in their houses, they're just like, okay, let me just eat something. So mm. the point is that the fact that she wasn't doing just cake, she was doing cakes, people are ordering cookies, people are ordering cookies, people mm. are ordering cake sickles, which are like completely different. For, so for a mm. brand that was maybe doing just cake, she might be getting mm. orders, but not as much as, in fact, the much. truth yeah. is that yeah. others have all, generally just reduced because people are trying to prioritize their expense and all of that. Yeah. But my point is that I'm happy that I have different streams of income. And that is why yeah. even when I'm talking to fashion business owners and even normal business owners, I tell them, okay, what, kind, what other thing can your business do for you? What other, what, what other income can your business generate for you? Right? Yeah. So being able to do other things that will bring money. Because if this part of your business doesn't bring money for you today, this other yeah. part should be able to bring money for you. So I'm not saying that you should go and do everything because you can't do everything. Mm. Then you're not doing anything. But anything. Mm. focus if it's just two or three, um, three um, parts or segments, whatever of your business that you have, then you can put a lot of, inf- um, what would I put it, resources in those areas and then you can get money yeah. from it. So COVID has affected, yeah, it has affected my business. It has affected a lot of businesses. Mm. But has, yeah. I'm, still, I'm still happy that I'm making like sales are still coming in even if it's not um the way it was but i mean yeah. they're still coming in and i think it's getting better i mean when the lockdown was just um, recently um eased it was worse like i can go a whole week and i won't make sales but i think now people like the world is still is opening up so yeah sales are just coming did. in small yeah exactly so people are still making plans i still have bridesmaids dresses that i want to make people are still making their plans like yeah okay yes this life has to continue yeah yeah <laughs> have to make a plan, so. yeah yeah it's, but i've just learned that even with covid the way customers are behaving has changed so i have to have to so my relationship with my customers has to also change trying to understand what they need trying to be there for them so during COVID now, during this period, mm-hmm. I decided mm-hmm. to give out like free face masks to my customers because me, I like to appreciate my customers a lot. If without my customers, I won't have a business. So I usually, I, I'm always there for them <laughs> because they're always there for me and my business. So I like to be there for them. So what I did was I gave, I gave out free face masks to my customers and okay. the, um, the response so far, like I gave out just one free face mask to people and then they've been ordering. Someone wow. even okay, I'm like, okay, I won't send a free face mask to you. And she said, Ah no, Eki, wait, I want to buy something from you. So when I buy that thing from you, you can add the free face mask to it. Yeah. So do you understand? It uh, was just a tiny so Yeah, it was just a tiny show of love, okay. Mm. So just stay safe. Just I just want to give mm. out this to you. But the mm. the the um effect, the the income that that tiny effort has brought to my business yeah. this period has been amazing. So, and that's why as business owners, we always have to keep thinking. We always have to try to think of smart ways to reach our customers, to yeah. service our customers, yeah. to be in their faces. And that's why this period, you still see people are still very much active on their social media pages because they need to keep yeah. posting so that people will know that they are still in business. They've not gone out of business. They've not so, gone out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, so you know, when I, business, I love- you have to stay consistent, you have to always be in your customers' faces, and that's what those big brands have been able to do. 
brands like coca-cola exactly. brands like pick me those people are always in our faces they're always yeah. in our face with marketing we're not that big to always do that kind of marketing but i mean mm. with the little that we can do we just have to try to keep being in our customers faces so pushing. that they can remember yeah. Like, yeah yeah definitely and i want to talk about i love for you we have to take questions in about five ten minutes so i'll okay. i'll try and wrap up all my own questions so we can take okay. everyone else's questions as well so i want to talk about strategy and i want to talk about social media i want to talk more about okay. social media so in terms okay. of strategy i know that you're very strategic and um the reason i know that is because when i was on well i'm still on moments we just haven't shot for a little bit but we'll hopefully be shooting soon but on moments yeah. you know you, you would work with the stylist give the stylist clothes to dress yeah. the presenters and that's mm -hmm. even that's i think that's how we met the first yeah that's, the that's first, how we met mm -hmm. yes how we got yes. to know of each other yeah um so you know that's one way and you know with giving masks you're very strategic you sort of think of different ways to um to connect with your customer it's not just it's not just okay i put a picture on instagram people like the picture they've seen my work so mm -hmm. what creative and strategic ways would you give to people to market and to push what they're doing and then how do you okay. use social media because i know that um again i remember one time here. let me tell one story sorry I remember this when Eki was not my friend. She's okay. My friend and you sent me a message in my DM and you're like, yeah. Hi, tell you that's Eki. Can you please put this post on your stories, up on mm -hmm. your stories from me? And I was like, Who is this? Because <laughs> I didn't know you. But I thought, Yeah, sure, mm -hmm. no problem. And I put it on my stories, right? And mm -hmm. But I actually thought that was very um, brave because a lot of people may mm -hmm. not want to ask because they're like, Oh, let me not ask. They may not do it. Da, da, da. But you asked. And I, and I noticed mm -hmm. that period, a lot of other people are actually put up i think you were having a sale or something and all of that had actually yes, put up your yes, poster i wanted, as I wanted well. it to yeah i wanted a lot of people to put oh, it yeah. out so people can it can reach a lot of audience so i yes. mean I will so, ask, so that works it's not like it's not like you can so what's the worst that can happen if i send you a dm the worst that can happen is that you will not reply me and then no problem my life will go on your life will go on there's no issue really, right like it's not yeah. a thief it's not like <laughs> It's not that serious. If you do not reply me, there's no problem. Someone else will reply me. Don't so I'm not scared to ask. It's my business. I, it should, yeah. I want to push it the best way I can. Like, if yeah. I don't push my yeah. business, I won't have money. So it's not like I'm doing Shakara doing this business. So yeah. I have to push the business. This is where I'm getting money from. So Please, I just hope everybody's here, though. No, no Shakara <laughs> so, in business. Please, oh. There's no Shakara. Okay. Like, you have to be very humble to be able to get... To get be able to... To be able to... Some people will just patronize you because of the way they feel like you're humble. Oh, you're telling them, thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Yeah. So, like, I will say all of that if I know that this is going to give me customers. It's going to give me money in my of business. Course. I'm able to pay my bills. It's not an issue. So, I feel like I used I so I work, I try to work with stylists. I try to work with um, I, I try to do some kind of collaborations with stylists or other people that are not even fashion designers, maybe um, makeup artists and all of that. So, but I just want to know what is in what is in it for me. Like, I don't want to do just mm -hmm. any kind of collaboration. So, if you decide to, to use a curate species to style your clients, I want to be sure that your clients are going to post these pictures and then tag a curate because it's, mm -hmm. it has to be a win-win situation. I'm not going mm -hmm. to give you out. I'm not going to give out a curate species to people that. They will not tag a curate. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's way beyond that level right now. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. can't. Mm -hmm. If it used to happen, if it can't happen again, like I'm learning, mm -hmm. my business is growing. So, so I try to be very strategic with the people that I work with. So mm -hmm. not every, yes, there's some collaborations that will not work for you. Like if you're not having my target market as the people that you're, ta I won't work with you. I won't yeah. work with you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I like yeah. to be very strate strategic because time is money. Even the pieces mm -hmm. I'm giving to you, if I don't get, I have someone else to buy it. Like, of course. So I like to be very strategic about that. And then for social media, and because I know that okay, social media is not the only place that I get my money from. Like, mm -hmm. most of my others come, of course, they come from social media. But I, they, they, most of my others also come from referrals. Like, referrals play a lot of role in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the sales that i receive so i always try to focus my energy on my customers make sure that they're satisfied really mm -hmm. some people have beautiful um instagram pages and then their business are, their business is rubbish like it's fucked up like so you have a beautiful team you have like cover you have um, what's it called you have a team you have like highlight cover and all of that and then your uh -huh. business itself is rubbish so 
like I've had different experiences like that. And I go and check the person, I say, oh, this person's page is fine. And when you see the person's page, you think that that's how the business is. Meanwhile, they have terrible customer service. Their mm-hmm. time, everything is just really wrong about the business. So why are you focusing your energy? So once you focus your energy to do marketing, for your mm. business and then the business itself when the customers come the customers are not yeah. satisfied what yeah. are you doing so it's like a cycle you're always looking for customers so the customers that i have gotten over time i try to focus on them that's why i keep saying i like to appreciate my customers i just okay. so they're like okay you're always there for me let me ah they will be the ones speak, speaking spreading the user I patronize their key patronize their key so some, some others mm. that i've gotten i don't even know who referred them to me and they're like okay this mm. person referred someone referred me to you and it's just yeah. so i want like for referrals referrals are like the best best form of marketing your business because they don't need any proof like when someone refers your brand to someone when they refer mm. when someone refers you to someone they don't ask any questions. They say, okay, I want to make this dress. I know that you can do it because you've done it for this person. Just that, so it's just so easy. So I really try to focus my attention on my customers, my okay. present customers. In as much as I'm trying to get new customers each day, I still push out a lot of marketing campaigns and all of that. But I try to focus on my customers because the customers I have now can give me you know the 80 20 rule where they say that it's 20 percent of your customers that will give you 80 percent of your revenue yeah. so my customers right now I focus on them a lot because yeah. uh, they've tried for me and I want to be there for them and because they're always there for me so I always focus on my customers that's really yeah. amazing and I don't you know, know what, what I love no 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 you have and one thing I really love about what you said okay. just to recap is that you talked about um, sometimes with social media marketing, we focus so much on like the aesthetics, how things look, the presets, the filters, the theme. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, if, I mean, something as basic as your customer service is not right, people are not actually going to come back to order from me. I know uh-huh. there's some Instagram pages uh-huh. I, you know, I try to order from, whether it's accessories or clothes or whatever, and they're rude. And you're like, I don't want to actually transact Why? with this company because it's I have like a see... product but just from the way yeah, yeah, I'm being like attended to. So, yeah. So, so I, yeah, I love so. that. I love that because I feel like we miss that in social media marketing. Mm-hmm. That's something that's always not always but often overlooked. Mm-hmm. We think more mm-hmm. about oh I captions want my, I want you my write. page yeah I want my page to look beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. 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 But it's it's so maybe we okay so let's let's good the questions yes yes mm-hmm. i have one lined up so it's not, I, I can't okay so if someone sorry let me go to it someone said what do you do if you stay in a location where sewing is extremely cheap as such it makes it almost impossible to set proper prices for your dresses i didn't really understand this question sewing is cheap hmm I do. That's why I'm. I'm not sure of that question. I'm. Sh- I think maybe what the person. Means yeah, I understand, is... I understand what the person is trying to say. You understand? Okay. So mm-hmm. yeah. So like, if your if your if your location is in, for example, Ikorodu, right? So if you're in Ikorodu and then sewing of pieces there, people that sew there, their prices might be very cheap, and you are in that location. So, what should you do then? Okay. So if another thing is, okay, if you're in that kind of location, you want to try to, you don't have to put your prices the way, as low as whatever that person is charging. But mm-hmm. I mean, you want to try to cost your product because if, if, if sewing is cheap there, probably maybe the rent is cheap, like the overhead that comes with producing your designs are cheap. So that's why it's cheap. Yeah. So you can try to work around that and say, okay, because I'm getting cheap labor, to mm-hmm. produce my designs, then my prices can be slightly cheap. But then again, you want to you want to know that uh, cheap is relative. So what do you consider cheap? What you consider cheap might be expensive to someone else, mm-hmm. and might be might just be okay to someone else. But another way you can push your business in that area is that you can try to have like an added service to your another an added service to your product so if you're okay. if you're sewing a dress mm-hmm. you can tell them that okay if you make this dress you can always come back for fitting even one year after if this dress is too big for you i'll fit it so that's okay. like an added service or you can tell them that okay you'll get um you get something free when you buy this so and then maybe your customer service oh or maybe you deliver for free you can deliver to them so all of these tiny tiny ad, um services that you're rendering mm-hmm. 
timely delivery, amazing customer service, amazing designs. Can you can relatively charge higher than what the other people are charging because this customer will know that okay, I know if I patronize this brand, they will not take my time. Two days is yeah. two days, they'll deliver to me. So yeah, I prefer to pay these amounts to have peace of mind for them to deliver to me rather than go and pay yeah somebody and then the person will take my clothes for three months i'll be calling 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 so oh, it's yeah. just the way you position your business and the way you actually relate with these customers that can you can that can really help your business if you're okay. in that kind of location okay awesome so i hope so, the person who asked that question is happy with that answer yeah. so next question is um from oluchi and she says how did you learn to price your products on what platform? And I also want to include in that question, you know, I think people don't take into account different costs. Maybe when they're pricing, they think of cost of tailor, cost of fabric, but maybe they're not thinking cost of marketing, cost of, you know, your own personal over, time, every, cost over, of buttons, overhead. cost of thread. Every other thing. Yeah, yeah, so how can how can people learn to price more, uh, price for profit, essentially? Yeah. Okay, so if you want to price your product, you want to always consider all the factors that, goes into the production of that outfit mm -hmm. so you want to look at your direct cost you want to look at your indirect cost so your, in, your direct cost basically are those items that go directly into the production of your outfit so for example that would be lining thread zip label those are things that go directly into the production then the indirect cost will be your marketing cost your your rental cost your welfare cost your miscellaneous mm -hmm. cost and then your profit and then you and then you add a profit to it. So, so what most people will do is that they usually just focus their um, pricing based on their direct cost. Okay, if I buy if I buy fabric four thousand naira, I will sew it two thousand naira. Then I can charge the customer ten thousand naira because mm. four thousand. So, if I buy four thousand naira fabric, two thousand naira to sew it, that's six thousand naira. I can charge the customer ten thousand naira. So four thousand naira is my profit. If you're doing that, then you're wrong. But the good thing is that I actually have it an online course. You know, earlier on, when Talula was introducing me, she said that I'm passionate about helping aspiring and then existing fashion business owner run, grow, build profitable fashion businesses. That's why I'm, what, I, like, I, want, I do that because I know when I started my business, I know that I was doing rubbish. And I know that I had learned and I had implemented into my business and my business is better. So I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I can't keep all of this information in my head. What is it doing for me? If I can help someone with this information, then... Mm -hmm it will better them be their business and better them in, in general. So I have general, yeah. a costing and pricing online course. In fact, that is like one of my best selling courses because people are making the same, people make the same. The truth is that why in Nigeria, people are making similar mistakes as you, just that we're not talking about it. So all people have the same costing and pricing issues. They're not talking so about it, but... Can we get so the, what's have, the what's the um, link for your um, Etsy okay. platform? Can we get the web right. URL? Yes. Okay. All right. So you can check out Ecuaries, com, or you just click on the link on my bio. The information about the courses that I have, they're there. But if you're trying to price and cost your product properly, the course I would advise you to take is costing and pricing your product to make profit. I put in a lot of information into that into the course. In fact, the reviews and the testimonies from that course is amazing. Like the, the testimonies are on my page, they're on the website as well. So you can just check www.ekioris.com for more information about the course. Or you just click on the link on my bio, that's at Ekioris bio, for mm. you to um, see all of the information. If you that course is very detailed, once you, it's going to show you everything, it's going to give you all the information that you need to cost and price your fashion product. And even even if you're not a fashion designer, like that yeah. cost can it's it, it, it goes it's it, it's for everybody. It's for it's for everybody basically. Okay, okay, fantastic. So yeah. we have a few more minutes. I'm quickly going to just do one more question and then we'll okay. round up. So I want to talk about um, dealing with international customers. So, you know, a lot of people who sell clothes in Nigeria, people internationally follow their pages, they get interested, they mm -hmm. want to buy from them. But mm -hmm. um, there's some barriers to entry. They're, oh, someone, I bought as well. Okay, someone bought your course and they're saying it was fantastic. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> they're saying that, you know, there's some barriers such as maybe uh, shipping costs, logistics, um, even payments, because I know in mm -hmm. Nigeria, some um, payment platforms don't accept international cards unless you're using PayPal and things like that. So mm -hmm. how have you been able to 
transact with international customers and also to grow your international customer base? Okay, so um, Paystack receives um, payments in dollars. So I've been using Paystack, and then I think there's some apps that you can actually transfer money. People overseas can transfer money to you, and then you get it in there. So I don't think I really had issues with payments. What I used to have issue with was with delivery, because okay. like when I want to deliver using DHL, using UPS, the price, the the cost of delivery was always so high, and mm. most times the customers would be like, okay, just hold on, hold on the item, let me order more things, so that. I mean, you somebody is buying a dress of ten thousand naira, and then the shipping cost is fourteen thousand or yeah. fifteen thousand. So it's always so crazy. So, but I think right now, what companies like Sendbox? I use Sendbox to send my items now. They're very, very. Say I'm doing free marketing for them. But anyways, they're very, very reliable, and the price is the price is fair. Like, and they they deliver to most countries so i've been i used to, i use sandbox and then but you can actually open an account with these companies if you open if you open a business account with dhl or with ups the prices mm-hmm. they're going to be giving to you will be better so you can explore that option as well and you'll be fine fantastic fantastic well Effie, thank you so much i want to thank you for instagram All right. us off. it's been amazing i know you personally but you know i didn't even know some parts of your story from when you started to where you are today yeah. um a lot of what you talked about in the beginning of our interview i really i we had never talked about it before so i learned a lot as well i know that um, there's some people who want to connect with you what is the best way to connect with you is it via your instagram page is it via email how can people reach out to you okay. about their fashion related questions Okay, so you can simply just send a DM to at Ecuris. So Ecuris is the at Ecuris is the main um, page. I have, by the way, I have a lot of pages. I have Ecuris. I have Ecuris RTW. I have Ecuris Kids Wear. I have Ecuris Fashion School. I have Ecuris Thrift Shops. <laughs> I have five pages, but you can send me a DM on any of those pages. But basically, if you send me a DM on Ecuris, I'll reply you. Mm-hmm. And then you can also send me an email or send me a message on WhatsApp. So okay. all of the information is on my pages. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Eki, thank you so so much. Thank you thank for you to you everyone in terms of innovative strategies. I think you know, yeah. you've given people ideas on really how to connect with their customers and how to ensure that their customers mm-hmm. almost become like evangelists for their fashion yes. brand. Go out so they can be spreading the word for you and you yes. just be in your house chilling. Chilling <laughs> so and marketing that, for you <laughs> and making money. That's what we so, like, just to see mm-hmm. if we are making money. It's very exactly. sweet. Definitely. Thank, so thank you. you so, so much. And for you guys out there, please do connect, continue to connect with us. We're going to be online yeah. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can visit us online at www.smartpreneur.ng and you can watch the actual program on TVC on Saturdays between 5.45 p.m. and 6 p.m. So just holler at us. You can even holler at us here on Instagram. Taken again. Sorry, like <laughs> the whole lot here on Nigeria. Instagram, as I know, right? Niger Factor just have to wear it. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in our next live. And please make sure that you do reach out and um, connect with Eki. Hi, Tiwa Works. Thank you for joining us. Tiwa Works is was on Smartpreneur the last season and is amazing. Oh, all, his, okay. all his events are amazing. All black everything. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye. See you in our next live session. Bye. Thank you. Bye.